Hello, fellow Araxians. I'm Commander Sirius. Welcome back. Now, I have a little bone to pick with Rogue Planet Games over a change they made to the scoreboard system. Right around the time Escalation launched and outfit resources were about to be a thing, they massively scaled back what sort of earned experience during a fight actually contributed to your score on the scoreboard. I'm going to explain to you what I understand as their logic for that and explain why I don't think it's the right decision. Okay, soldiers, let's dive in, and I'll see you planet side. Bragging rights. What's more important than planet side 2? Certs? Nah. ISO 4? Who cares? Getting your outfit's name on a base? That's badass. Now, this feature of the scoreboard system was released a long time ago, but originally it was just for vanity. There were no outfit resources at the time. There was no bonus nanite boost. You didn't get to always spawn at the base no matter where you were on the map instantly. There were no perks to it. It was strictly bragging rights. But even then, there was a big worry about was it fair? First of all, you had to make sure the boost didn't contribute to the score or would be pay to win. So membership boosts, squad boosts, any sort of boost experience does not count. Only the base level experience gain of an action without any modifiers is what contributed to your score on the scoreboard. So they went to the extra effort to make sure that bragging right was not pay to win. I was sort of like, hey, it's strictly cosmetic. Why can't it be pay to win? Let people who are members show off just how many points they rack up, encourage other people to scribe, and hey, in the end, if they don't want to, it's totally cosmetic. It's not unfair if you don't get your name on it. But they probably saved a lot of drama, making sure it wasn't pay to win. And that's all different now, that outfit resources exist. It's no longer just cosmetic. There's a currency attached to getting your outfit's name on a base. It has to be fair and square. And the other big component was, well, isn't just the biggest outfit always gonna win? Whatever Zerg fit shows up, just by sheer amount of bodies there, even if they all just get a few experience, they're going to beat out everyone else. And again, they solved this early on, well before Escalation, making it so that only the top 10 best contributors from every outfit count towards which outfit gets their name on the base. So for example, if you're fighting with your six-man squad at a base, and another outfit is there with their 48-man platoon, if your six outfit members outscore the top 10 outfit members from that big platoon, your outfit will take the base. So that whole argument and concern was solved from the beginning. The 10 players that score the highest for each outfit count. Whoever has the highest score of those combined gets their name on the base. So the system is not pay to win and it is not Zerg to win. We've got the biggest thing solved. The big change came when they tried to solve one more thing. When the system originally released, basically any way you gained experience contributed your score on the scoreboard. So people could effectively pad their score. There was not much going on at the base. Your outfit mate throws down an ammo pack. Everyone else in the outfit stands on there, fires run round and reloads. All of a sudden, someone is ticking up a lot of ammo resupply ticks and that experience is counting towards the capture. Same thing could go on with revives. If you're at what is effectively a spawn camp, you have friendlies that are being effectively suicidal or outfit mates. Your outfit mates all go medic, revive all those suicidal friendlies. You can rack up again the score on the scoreboard without significantly contributing to the capture of that base. So the solution was they basically axed experience gained on the scoreboard for everything other than kills, points gained for recontrolling a capture point, and points gained for hacking and disabling generators. There are a few other experience events that do count towards the scoreboard, but I don't really know them and I don't notice them. They're not very significant. That is what I see happening at the fights that usually determines which outfit wins control of the base. And my problem with that, in them dealing with a few of the outliers, They've basically eliminated a lot of the experience events that are extremely important in capturing a base. 
Let's go through a few of those. The most basic one to me is the revive. So often when you capture a base, what is more important than killing the enemy is the ability for your friendlies to keep reviving you. That breaker pod can kill me all day long, but when there's a medic behind me, it's not going to make any difference. So who is actually contributing more to the completion of this capture? The breaker pod getting one kill, who under the current system does get on the scoreboard, or the medic that completely negates that kill, who in the current system does not get in the scoreboard at all for that work. It's obviously the medic. It's not that force multipliers don't have their purpose. If they can thin out the defenders enough that the infantry can break through, then they've more than done their job, and they certainly should get their score contributing on the scoreboard. But for medics that are out there working overtime, a lot of times not doing the most glamorous job, I think it really shortchanges the ability of the system to determine what outfit contributed the most to capturing the base. And let's think for a second about those spawn camp situations where it really is the outfit that revives the most that ends up getting the capture. There's two ways to look at that reality. A, it's probably the Zerg fit that wins at that point. And if it's a Zerg staring at spawn rooms, then they effectively did the most to capture the base. Or you can look at it like B, there was no real contest. So really no one deserves to capture the base. Not the people that were able to snipe enough heads poking out of the spawn room, or the people that were able to revive enough corpses that the spawn room warriors got. It's not worth messing up the scoring system for a really big fight where one outfit deserves to get their name on it because of these outlier situations where there's not a real contest. So make medic reviving great again. Let their points land on the scoreboard. Next big one that was removed was motion detect experience no longer counts towards the scoreboard. This is another one that really irks me. Having intel or radar up in any form is such a massive advantage to your team. The fact that that contribution doesn't hit the scoreboard is really irksome. In this tech plant fight, the defenders were constantly changing position, attacking from the tubes, from the stairs, from the balcony. Without proper intel, there's no chance we would have repelled the amount of waves that we did. And I can see the position. If someone's flying a Raider Valk above the fight, getting detect assists for every kill in the battle, they could rack up a pretty serious score. But I say great, more power to them. If they are willing to play that support role, provide that vital intel to allies, they deserve to have the role they played and the score they gained from that contribute to their outfit capturing the base just as much as anyone else. Planetside 2 is a combined arms game. It takes more than just the shooters. What shows up on the scoreboard should reflect that concept of the game. So make motion detect experience great again. Make sure that those infiltrators get all of their contributions showing up on the scoreboard. Okay, next one I want to talk about is spawn experience. Is there a more basic important contribution to a fight than to allow attackers to continue to spawn into that fight so that fight can continue to exist allowing sunday spawns or any spawns galaxy ant whatever it may be to count on the scoreboard is a no-brainer to me for a few reasons first of all the fact that it's so vital to battles but is not very fun the average populace would rather just instant action around or direct spawn into fights that are already going. The people that'll take the time to bring up those spawns should be duly rewarded for it. Second of all, the spawn experience is next to nothing. The base experience now, I believe, is two experience per spawn. It used to be five at launch. Again, with how vital spawns are in order to keep the action and planet side going, I would love to see the general experience buffed back to original state but at the bare minimum it should certainly count towards the scoreboard one issue we did see at launch was that the spawn experience was so lucrative it was not unheard of to tk friendly sunderers so you could then set up your own and reap those rewards for yourself there were a couple big reasons this was such a huge issue at launch a people were desperate for certs no one had any and there was so much to unlock and B, there were just way more people. So it was actually a challenge 
to get your sun replaced before someone else did. Whites would literally have 15 sunderers surrounding them. Nowadays, we're lucky if there's a third or fourth sunderer at any fight. So encouraging people to set up those backups because it has a great reward, keep fights going longer, is a good idea. Now playing devil's advocate, why could the Sunderer spawn contribute to the scoreboard mess with it a bit? Well, whoever gets the perfect spawn, the one closest to the point, the one that most people use, will definitely have a leg up on the scoreboard. But because it is the go-to spawn and the most coveted spot, isn't that effectively saying whoever got their Sunday set up there ready to rock and roll for the fight did contribute the most in terms of spawning? Yes, there's going to be a race of people going to get their Sunder in that position. That's great. We want to create that demand. We should have five people rolling up trying to get their Sunday out first. And people aren't always going to win that race, but that's okay. Then we get some backup Sunderers. It is good to create that demand. High experience rewards for the spawns and letting it hit the scoreboard. So it's really showing, hey, good work. Thanks for bringing up the Sunderers. While we're on vehicles, let's talk about the experience drivers earn when their gunner gets a kill. Again, this no longer counts on the scoreboard, but I would argue this is extremely vital work. Myself and a teammate have been able to make the difference in whether we win or lose the fight by pulling a Cobalt Harasser or a Bulldog Sunderer at just the right time. And the driver is, I would go further than just as important, is far more important than the gunner to some of these maneuvers working. The fact that their experience gain doesn't go to the scoreboard is just downright unfair. They are drawing the attention of tons of enemies. We're taking a lot of enemies off the playing field. In terms of contribution to the capture, both the driver and gunner are doing a significant amount of work. And if they end up racking up some extra points because they are using a force multiplier, more power to them. And we can loop right into this one, engineer repairs. Do not count on the scoreboard. If you're going to absorb that much damage and attention, and then, hey, but you're not going to lose the force multiplier, you're going to get repaired ready to go again. That is 100% something that should count on the scoreboard. That is a big contribution to the battle. Whether you're repairing a vehicle or you're repairing a max, doesn't matter, all part of it, all should count. So guys, the list goes on and on here. I understand the battle flow kind of sucks, and what outfit captures a base is sometimes going to be determined on which outfit throws down the most ammo packs. And I know that sucks, but for the situations that that happened, no outfit is really deserving. It is okay if it's the coin toss of who does the most ammo resupplies. But in the battles that it really matters, a little bit of extraneous ammo resupply experience is going to make no difference in who actually takes it. With the constraint of only counting your top 10 contributing members, in a battle where you do count repairs, revives, healing, ammo, motion detect experience, etc., all of those things will help you get to determining whatever outfit contributed the most to that fight. It should not be at this place where Whoever killed the most gets the most points. Now, having said all that, I do think that most of the time, the most deserving outfit gets the capture. There's usually a main outfit that does a lot of heavy lifting. They usually get a lot of kills in the process. And even though it doesn't show the work of their medics and engineers that were working within their outfit, they still end up with the cap. And I think that is part of Rogue Planet Games logic. Well, if you have medics reviving you, you'll get a bunch more kills because you have more sustain. And that's true. If that's what they played on, it is generally playing out that way. But I still think it's disappointing that all those unsung heroes doing the support roles, whether it's infill, medic, NG, spawns, whatever it may be, don't pop up on that scoreboard like they used to. Let's go back to the days when someone with a med tool and a shield bubble could be number one on the scoreboard. Okay, soldiers, that was fun. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts down in the comments. That's all for now. I'm Commander Sirius, and until next time, I will see you, Planet Side.